Nancy and James Yancey were free blacks who came to Fairfield in late 1856. Nancy had attended Oberlin College, very unusual, and they were running an Underground Railroad operation in Fairfield. Now we know the Underground Railroad was primarily consisted of white islands, white people around the country, but here in this city you had a leading couple who happened to be African American who were helping other freedom seekers. I would not use the word escape slaves, but freedom seekers trying to move forward in their lives. They would clothe them, they would house them, they would feed them, they would protect them as they move forward. That really makes them heroes to me. But one of the fascinating things about Nancy Yancey is she was born enslaved, gained her freedom. She had her education, her college education, moved subsequently to Iowa, and she became, with her husband, leading citizens of Fairfield. That was a time when Although she was well qualified to teach, well, we know why she couldn't teach. But what she did do as a businesswoman, and she ran a very successful laundry, is women would come over, and while they would drop off their clothes, they'd engage in political discussions. And this became, as I understand it, a center for political discussion, for progress. I would like to have been a fly on the wall to, be, to hear those political discussions, even if I couldn't have participated. That would have been pretty cool. It is um, amazing to think that um, a woman could come to a town, a small town in Iowa, during the time she came and actually be productive, actually help the number of people that she helped, and actually become such a pillar of a community that was not a majority uh, colored community, or people of color community. Um, so it's, it's quite fascinating. James Yancey, her husband, he also was an extraordinary human being. He managed, built a successful barbershop, and he was an accomplished, apparently accomplished speaker in 1867. He gave a public speech in Central Park advocating the right to vote for men and women. It wasn't until 1920, of course, we know, with the 19th Amendment, that the right to vote for women was guaranteed by the United States Constitution. But they were people who were in the vanguard. They were leaders. They were leaders right here in Jefferson County in Fairfield, Iowa. And for that, I think they need to be remembered as true heroes.